May the grace, mercy, and peace of the incarnate Christ child be yours this day. Merry Christmas. Thank you. It is good to be gathered with you this morning to celebrate the birth of Jesus, our Savior. And at first glance, the gospel reading that we read today seems an odd choice for a Christmas Day service. You may know this verse, this set of verses, as one of those Bible passages that's sort of a tongue twister. There's a lot of confusing phrases in it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it's also the kind of verse that when you read it, even when you read it correctly, you get done and you're thinking, what does that mean? What did I just read? Right? Like in verse 10, he was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. It could be kind of confusing. But it doesn't sound very Christmassy. But in this section from the first chapter of John, the gospel writer beautifully highlights the core of the joy and the celebration that we have gathered here today to celebrate on Christmas. And it's summed up in the phrase, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. But that's one of those phrases that when you read it, you think, well, what exactly does that mean? I know it's probably talking about Jesus because it's Christmas and Jesus was born, but I don't really understand what it says. What is the word that is he, here it's referring to? Are we looking for a particular word, like the words that we use, maybe like gravitational? Is that the word that has become flesh? Or anti-disestablishmentarianism? No, that's silly. It's not that. It's not the kind of word that's being spoken of here. And if you look in your bulletin in the gospel reading, you'll see that in all of those instances where we're talking about the word, the word, word, is capitalized. Because it's referring to the Logos, God's Word. God's Word has been made flesh. Now, when we think of God's Word, that draws our attention back to the very beginning of the Scriptures in Genesis chapter 1, at the creation of all things. Because our Gospel reading tells us and our Epistle reading from Hebrews that Jesus... The incarnate Jesus has been present since the beginning. He was not yet man, but he was always there. And in the beginning was the Word. So if we flip in our Bibles back to Genesis chapter 1 and we go to verse 3, we see where the Word is present at creation. In verse 3 of Genesis, God it says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And this pattern is repeated throughout Genesis chapter 1 of God saying, let there be, and there was. We're not just talking about any old word. We're talking about God's word. I don't know about you, but when I say, let there be, there's no wuzzing that happens after that. I can't say, let there be pizza, and it just shows up. But when God says, let there be, there is. All things were made through him, this word. And without him was not anything made that was made. This is where Jesus was present before his incarnate birth that we celebrate today. He has always been and always will be God's word, the source of all things. And today, that word of God has become flesh and is dwelling among his people. And his name is Jesus. But what does that mean for us, that the Word of God has been made flesh? Well, it means that the Word of God that has created all things, that literally speaks things into existence, is not done yet. 
He has come to declare something new. He has come to continue speaking his word to his people. In short, he has come to create children of God. Now how does that work? God does this by simply declaring them to be. His word says it, and so it is. And he can do that because he is the word made flesh. Isn't that amazing? Think about that for a moment. The very same word of God that said, let there be light, and there was. The same word that put the stars in the heaven, that created the sea and the earth and everything living in them, says to you, you are my child, and so you are. No longer dead in the trespasses of our sin, but alive in Christ Jesus, because he says so. Now sometimes when we say that to somebody, it doesn't hold a lot of weight, especially once, maybe with kids, once they get to a certain age, when you say, because I said so, it starts to lose its effect. But not with God. Because when he says something, it happens. So what new things has he come to declare? The word made flesh today has come to declare some new things to you. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. But what is this life and this light? Later on in our gospel reading, he says this. But to all who did receive him, this word made flesh, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Dear friends in Christ, today the word of God declares to you, let there be children of God, there are. You are children of God. This happened in your baptism when God declared to you, he put his name on you and said, you are mine, and so you were. This word of God declares, you are my child. In your baptism, Jesus, the, the word made flesh, binds himself to you. That's why he got baptized by John. He didn't have any sins that needed washing away, but you did, and so did I. And he binds himself to us and declares us forgiven. And so we are. He declares you his own, and so you are. This new word made flesh continues. He continues declaring forgiveness of sins eternal life that conquers death, and salvation to all who believe. And you can trust this word, because it's God's word. That's the beautiful connection that is made in John chapter 1, this word that has become flesh, that is declaring all of these promises to you, is the word that was there in the beginning that made all things. His words do what they say. His words are what we would call autogenetic, that they make the things they declare. They create them into being. So dear friends in Christ, if the Son of God, the Word, became, who has become flesh today, Jesus Christ says to you, your sins are forgiven. They are forgiven. If he declares to you that you are his child, you are his child. If he declares to you that you have eternal life forever with him, then you do. Because he says so. And the word of God creates what it says. It turns dead people into living people. It turns hopeless people into hopeful people. It turns us into children of God. This is the joy 
that we celebrate today. The joy of the birth of Jesus. The joy of the word of God who has become flesh. Because he's here as the children so rightly said to save his people from their sins. And he has come to declare to you that you are an eternally alive, forgiven child of God. And so you are. In the name of Jesus. Amen.